All right, so this is our bigger bathroom. You see those roots right there? Those were from Defenbachia, Defenbachia clippings. From this plant right here, and it's still got half dozen more. It's about three, three and a half feet. It's coming all the way up towards the ceiling thing here in these lights. It's a Defenbachia, um, a spider plant. This one used to be about as small as this one of the weakest ones out of the group and we ended up saving that one. It split several times from there. And this is another clipping of the Diefenbachia that we have had in here for several months and it is loaded with roots. Um, I think we might have put a tiny bit of Epsom salt water in here at one point but other than that light and water and it is actually thriving putting out other stuff, but this is our large bathroom, um, Diefenbachia clippings and a spider plant. I'd like to give all those away and I'd like to give this away, but when it comes to gardeners, um, it might be a little easier. Um, I don't know a lot of people that want house plants. Mostly they want uh, the veggies and stuff that we're about ready to grow. So um, this is our larger bathroom. It's uh, in with the shower. So it has a more of a humid environment. One of these lights is out. I need to hit that one up right there, but we grow some plants in here. These are uh, the house plants. All right, and this is our littler bathroom. Um, it gives more of a dry environment. We have heat lamps up here, two of them right now. Um, it's a small bathroom with heat lamps like that. It's kind of rare because um, it makes this bathroom really, really warm and give it like a uh, desert-like environment. But these are... Um, a lot of the reason I want to show what we got going on right now is because we're about ready to give away a lot of this. This one right here is the black pearl that we had planted earlier. Um, pepper plant. It's a 99% uh, sure this one's crossed. I'm just, we've been clipping it out as it's needed in order to just have several of the plants go. We're going to give that whole thing away. We're going to give the whole one of the gold finger away as well. Um, I'm not sure if that one's crossed, but, um, those are both going. These are the Majorum and the Cumin. We're going to keep those going. There's little sprouts going for those. The Shisho, we haven't been able to, Shiso, we have not been able to get to grow for some reason um, from two different seed sources and we're not sure what we're doing wrong. One time we ran it in a heat mat, the other time we've ran it in here and uh, not quite sure, but it's probably something we're doing wrong with this Shiso. So it might be uh, worth looking into on uh, starting uh, Shiso seeds. We've tried them a couple different ways now. And here's the lemon mint, and I think we might give this one a whole way, the lemon mint one. And then an extra prairie fire, and these ones are probably going out to the compost bin. There's our Hoya. We gave the other one away, but this one right here is a houseplant that's uh, really, really cool. We'll probably up pot that one, and it'll go into the larger bathroom. Here is a Ponderosa lemon that I clipped the top off of. Um, it's doing really good though. It's got plenty of uh, room for right now and uh, trees can take a little bit longer to grow so we like growing trees just for fun. That is a mini bell. I've offered that to a friend. He hasn't picked it up yet. It's got some more flowering coming on it. It's been growing for about a year and a half and I actually had it glowing clear up to here and chopped it down and just left one of the shoots going and it's starting to go again. That is a rescue operation. We got it from a grocery store for really, really cheap. It was a mini rose bush. We never helped it out, so it has fallen out. It's going um, into the compost as well. And then we got the lemon trees that we've been growing for about four or five years now. There's two of them in this bin right here. And then we got our avocado that we've been having go for about four to six months now. And I had chopped it right here at one point, topped it, and it had several different shoots coming out. So it's doing pretty well. Um, a lot of this stuff is just kind of attritioning. So we're gonna keep these, the compost, friend or compost, keep. Um, this is pretty much just a scrub tray. Um, a couple of these are gonna go compost. A few of them will be given out. And this is, uh, we'll be keeping these two and giving that one away and probably composting that one. And that's the whole of this. So this is the small bathroom. Um, the heat lamps make it really, really well for um, keeping it warm, almost like a desertish environment. That might not be optimal for a couple of the citrus and the avocado, 
but we just make sure that we swap them every once in a while or keep uh, plenty of water on them and such. But we grow these for house plants. We're not really trying to grow lemons or expecting to. Eventually I'll get a dwarf lemon tree of some sort, but this is our little bathroom. So this is our little indoor greenhouse. We basically get the seeds and stuff ready right here, take it to the kitchen right here and work on the project and then move the new planted seeds into this little greenhouse. We're only using three shelves of it because uh, we have a cat issue, so we kind of keep the bottom shelf crowded. And if you're ever using these, you want to keep weight on the bottom shelf, they can tip really, really easy. Um, we keep the door open so we can make sure that too much humidity doesn't collect when we're using the grow lights in here. But uh, this is a tray of eight types. Um, with about four seeds planted in each they're coming up really well we want to strengthen those up those are going to two of the farm market vendors we know by getting them some of these more unique uh, plants we might be able to see more of those in the market this year so just um, several different types here um, it kind of gives us a test germination on our seeds it also uh, gives us the opportunity to kind of get things started and see how things are going I think that this soil might have ended up a little bit too moist and I don't really like using these bigger ones for starting peppers peppers can take a little bit longer and um, that's one of our worries right now is that we might have waited a little bit too long um, for what we're used to so we had to readjust the soil a couple times we've been using coconut coir perlite and then we've also been starting to add a little bit of sand but our first pepper tray is right here and it's got quite a few going and it's the got the sand mixture too and I'm thinking I need to use a little bit more perlite or sand too I don't like the way that the top soil will start to compact somewhat so it'll really like hold a lot of moisture right there so you'll get in between here you'll get completely dry underneath but the entire pockets like super super wet and you kind of want to get the top broken up a little bit so that's what you're seeing right here see how I broke up the top as in comparison to like this one right here that's completely flat. Sometimes the seeds might need a little bit of help. Sometimes a big piece of perlite gets stuck right up above them and they might stagger just a little bit, especially when uh, we're still trying to refine our um, quick start um, or quick make uh, seed starting soil. But this is the tray and got pretty good germination on everything so far. Both of these are on a heat mat. And this is our ornamental peppers. We had originally planted these in little um, eight packs or something like that, I believe, or six packs like this. And then uh, started transplanting them. So this is three types of prairie fire and three types of Medusa. This one over here is three types of sangria and three types of explosive ember. Um, these ones are all, all giveaway ones in the middle here. We have uh, seven plants and they are all four types. In the middle is one prairie fire and then there's two explosive ember, two sangria, two medusa. So we'll be keeping that middle tray right there as uh, two of each. Um, one that Angel picked out and one that I picked out to be up potted and kind of grow as our own little ornamentals. And these ones right here probably won't be here in the next video. We're going to probably take those down to the market next um, Saturday and just hand them out to somebody. But ornamental peppers were all transplanted up. Um, our first pepper tray. As soon as those go, we'll be putting our first tomato tray down there. And it'll be uh, eight types from Angel and eight types from me. Just very similar to this, just one tray though. And that's our indoor greenhouse. All right, so this is our grow shelf system. Um, after the little greenhouse, after everything's on the heat mats and under the light and starts to sprout starts to get its true leaves we move it into different systems um we got a bunch of different kind of cup systems here and stuff like that that we uh, mix and match in order to have a little reservoir on the bottom put holes in the inner cup and uh, use the double cup method on a lot of different ways those are cottage cheese containers you can use all sorts of uh, things you'd normally find as possibly trash in a normal yard um those are actually from grocery store <laughs> Um, chicken I believe so both of those came from right there and they hold six packs of those and it's kind of uh, just puzzle piecing together there was a sale at the Home Depot and these are normally ten dollars each I've never heard of these this brand but it's fish fertilizer they were normally ten dollars each I got them for two dollars each I went back a day or two later to try to get some more 
and uh, they were marked down to one dollar but all gone so it might be worth checking the Home Depot on fish fertilizer clearance if uh, you might have some in yours but ten bucks bought me five uh, fish ferts I never heard of that brand before but I'm guessing fish ferts is fish ferts I just thought I'd show that uh, deal real quick but we got um, double LED shop lights one at shop light and then we got a really really nice grow light here this bin we move things in and out of based on prepping for going. I don't like to run the fan heater or the fan light like that all the time. But uh, when we're getting ready to take something to the market or friends or family, or we're trying to find a home for it, we uh, kind of put it in here and uh, really give it its last boost of uh, growth for like the last four or five days and stuff. So that's like a relay bin. Um, there was a bin that I showed a little bit earlier in the little bathroom that had the red shiso and stuff in it. We'll also move that out here for about four or five hours um, every single night to kind of make sure it gets that really, really good light. But that's what we uh, use this first shelf for. The second shelf right here has Tiny Tim tomatoes, Minibel tomatoes, which are a couple uh, dwarf or near micro varieties. Um, these four are ginger. And these four are one of each type of the ornamental types that we planted. So we're probably going to give those to a friend really soon. A lot of this stuff won't be here. I think we're going to give two of the ginger away, keeping the weakest one just in case it doesn't go um, as well. And then keeping two goods to try to go in a grow bag this year. And then those four ornamentals will probably go to my sister, a friend of mine. And then a couple ginger out to the market or whatnot. These right here, me and Angel will each choose one of our favorites and then we'll just give the rest away as well. So really just wanted to show everybody a lot of the stuff that we're doing because we're getting ready to get rid of a lot of plants to make room for the explosion of tomatoes and peppers we're going to be starting. This basil is really, really cool. It is spicy globe basil. It grows really, really well in a container. It looks um, excellent on every leaf. It smells and taste a little bit like clove. I was kind of surprised by that. It wasn't quite as basely as um, I'm normally used to, but I really, really like the flavor of it. I could just understand how a lot of that strong flavor might not work. But to me, it means you can just use a little part of it. We haven't topped these down or anything yet. They're really just kind of dueling up and keep going. This is sweet basil, and I know it looks really, really haggard, but we have cut and topped and trimmed and gotten hordes and hordes and hordes of basil off of this. So I wouldn't mind giving these away or we can just keep trimming the leaves. Um, growing, growing really, really well. It's um, pretty much root locked. I wouldn't want to use these as, uh, to transplant in the yard. They're going to be really, really an issue in a couple months before we can get into the yard. These uh, Tamarillo just exploded recently. And these three are Manzano peppers. And they are a furry pepper from capsicum pubescence, one of the rare types of peppers. It's a black seeded pepper. Um, it grows in usually cooler altitudes. Uh, Manzano, I believe, means apple. And it's a really unique black seeded um, furry planted pepper. Really cool. And the tamarillo is really cool too. I hear it can take a couple years to get anything off of those. So I'm not sure what we're going to do with those yet. Um, at the very least, the plants don't really go to waste. We have friends, family, uh, market vendors. There are friends, but we just kind of go down there and say hi to them and hang out with them and um, get a lot of unique plants to them and stuff because they have greenhouses and stuff to grow in. But sweet basil, spicy globe, um, manzano peppers, and tamarillo. We've harvested hordes and hordes of this as well. And that is oak leaf lettuce, and this is red romaine lettuce. And that's regular chives, and we have garlic chives just starting to sprout in this other one. And then here is the chamomile tufts. Super healthy and just drinking tons and tons of water. We could water them about every day, but we water them about every other day. Every time that we water them, they super explode in growth. See how they're filling out in there? A lot of these will need to be uncrowded, and uh, I don't think Angel will let me give any of these away, or any of these. Here is toothache plant. That one's already starting to form a head on it. That one is. That's uh, cinnamon basil. 
it's really uh it drinks so much water if you don't water it every day it starts to get a little bit of discoloration discoloration on the leaves because it just really is just several plants in there that never got divided um harvested a little bit of that that is magenta chard it's doing pretty well too it's got really cool colored leaves it looks like it's not as uh healthy as it is because of the coloration but it's uh really really healthy plants and those are two more of the two thick that are starting to get tops this one has tops i don't know if you can see it but there is pollen falling on that leaf and these ones are so many roots inside of those four toothache plants that it's uh, kind of crazy. I think that they're they're stuck in those, but that's okay. We can get several of those off the top and save seeds from them and uh, store them and use them for teas, um, sore throats. Uh, we like to put a little bit in our tea just to kind of numb if you have a sore throat. But uh, it's also known as the electric daisy. It's the toothache plant. And uh, maybe we'll try one of these on camera one of these days coming up because we have a couple that are almost ready. But a really, really uh, cool plant you might want to look into if you haven't heard of it before. It's called the electric daisy or toothache. But harvested tons of this lettuce. The chamomile tufts are doing excellent. This is a farm market, I believe, Meyer lemon that we brought home. And did the baggie method to get the seeds up and then put them in these little plastic shot glass things in this uh, ice cube tray thing that we modified in this little food bin thing. But this one doesn't have one. I did a little autopsy and checked in there a little bit though. The seed's still viable and trying. It's just not going anywhere. So it's just a really slow stunted seed. That one. That one's got three. I don't know how that happened. I think one of the seeds are, I think it's called diatanimus or something like that. It's almost like twins. Um, the most we put into any one of these is two seeds. There's two there, one here, one here. One there, one back, one there, and a little start right here. So they're right up close to some good light. Um, the heat from these kind of warms this a little bit too. So little mini lemon trees. And this right here, I had a friend that has kind of been into gardening too since, uh, since he met me. And he's been growing a container garden. Maybe I'll get a chance to show it this year. But... Uh, he was at a friend's house and he was uh, trimming down a lemon tree that the guy had started. Well, he accidentally cut it like near the base, I think, trying to cut a leaf off or something and uh, ruined that guy's tree. And so I think I might give him all of these. I might just give him this whole package and tell him to take it to dude. And you know what I mean? I th everything's cool after that. So this is our grow shelves. Catch you in a second. All right, so this is the yard, and it always looks bigger on camera. Um, it's 27 feet from the door to the fence, and it is 15 feet across. This is the west wall, this is the north wall, and this is the east wall. The east wall will mostly be tomatoes. Uh, the west wall is mostly peppers. The middle here, we're going to grow three different types of tomatoes, and the back is all sorts of things. Uh, we're going to do corn, cucumbers, um, different stuff like there. Um, this is our pepper wall, our tomato wall, and we call this the north gate even though there's no gate on it. But I'm going to show you guys a lot more on the yard as it comes up. Our goal is to grow as many unique varieties as possible. I know that our focus point is mostly on peppers and tomatoes, but our yard is all rock and cement. Um, peppers and tomatoes are both excellent grows for containers so that's why we like those there's tons and tons and tons of unique varieties you could probably grow 20 different varieties of each for the rest of my life and not see all of them so um, our goal is just to see something unique have lots and lots of fun this year and uh, see how much we can fit um, a lot of what captures this is the intrigue out in the yard um, building a snow hill I'm hoping it snows again pretty soon but uh, we're going to interlace beans throughout here, um, all sorts of stuff. I'll show you guys a lot more on the yard coming up. But it is May 3rd of 2021 and just wanted to give everybody a rundown of what's going on over here. Um, like I was saying a little bit earlier, a lot of our plants are about ready to be given out. So about half of that stuff will be missing by the 10th of March, I'm guessing, at the longest. and. Uh, making room for a lot more stuff getting started so 
We are geared up, ready to go, and uh, super excited to grow with everyone this year. It is May 3rd of 2022, and we will, or March 3rd of 2022, and we will catch you next time. Love you guys. Thanks for watching.